Hey everyone, Colton Carnival here with Fast Graphs. In this video, we are going to discuss the new release 4.14. There are some really exciting features in this release, and we even have a awesome announcement that will be hopefully coming to all of our users pretty soon. So jumping into this release, one of the biggest things that we released was the new performance chart. So clicking on the performance tab, you will find this new chart here, along with some data reorganized down to the bottom. So focusing on this chart, what we have is the cumulative change in price versus the metric that you've selected, along with a valuation comparison chart. From here, we can also add up to three comparison tickers. So right now I'm looking at Johnson & Johnson as the primary ticker, and I'm comparing it to the SPY, Elevance, and Microsoft. For the time being, I'm gonna remove Elevance, and I'm gonna remove Microsoft just to get rid of some clutter on this chart so we can figure out what's going on here. So as you can see, both of these charts are linked up. This top tooltip is linked up with the bottom chart, so both charts are showing data for November 12th, 2010. And as you scroll left and right, with your mouse, you can see that they stay linked up to give you a better viewing experience of the data that you're looking at. So let's pick apart this first chart, the cumulative change chart. What we have on here is the cumulative change of the Johnson & Johnson price charted, the cumulative change of the EPS, and then the cumulative change of the SPY price and SPY EPS. So we can see here that we just have Johnson & Johnson's cumulative price change. This is from January 2nd, 2004 to February 23rd, 2024 that we have this plotted. So the price has changed from $51.66 all the way to $161.84, or a cumulative change of 213.28%. We then also plot the EPS change. So during this time, the EPS has changed 278%. And then we do that with the comparison tickers. So we can see that the SPY's price has changed by 356% and the EPS has changed by 290%. So what does this chart tell us? This chart shows us that the SPY's price has outperformed Johnson & Johnson's price change. But the other thing that it shows us is that the EPS has slightly outperformed it. They've relatively stayed the same. But we've seen a larger outperformance in price. And then in conjunction with that, we have this valuation chart. So this chart is just explaining, once again, the cumulative change. But with the valuation chart, we can see how and what has affected that cumulative change. So down here, we have the trading PEs plotted and then the fair value PE plotted as well. This fair value PE is the fair value PE that you'll find on the historical chart for the time frame that you've selected. So if on the historical chart it says a 22 times PE ratio for the orange line, you'll find that here. If it says 15, you'll find that here. In this case, for Johnson & Johnson, we're plotting a 15 times multiple for fair value, so we see that on the performance chart. So now let's dive into why the SPY has outperformed Johnson & Johnson in this case, even though their EPS, their fundamentals have roughly grown at the same rate. If we take a look at this, both of these stocks started relatively overvalued. Johnson & Johnson was trading at a 19.48 PE with the SPY trading at a 20.29. Now, if we look all the way to the very end here, Johnson & Johnson's P.E. ratio has collapsed a little bit, going from that 19 to 16, whereas SPY's has increased slightly, going from 20 to 23. So that's why we see a disconnect. That's why we see the price of Johnson & Johnson underperforming its EPS, and then it also underperforming the SPY. The SPY technically had a little bit of PE expansion along with the growth, so it's going to outperform its own earnings, while Johnson & Johnson had a little bit of PE collapse because it went from overvalued to roughly fairly valued, so it'll underperform the percent change. It'll underperform the fundamental change of the business. Then if we change these, we can change different time frames and see how, once again, these have performed. Johnson & Johnson has performed more in line with its EPS, while the SPY has continued to outperform its EPS change. And we can see that, you know, for the same reason, 
the SPY has gone through a bit of PE expansion, while Johnson and Johnson has pretty much stayed the same. You know, it underperformed its EPS barely, and that's because we had a slight PE collapse. Now let's take a look at a company like Cisco and see how this works. So if we look at the max time frame, we can see, first of all, that Cisco's EPS has significantly outperformed everything here. It's outperformed the SPY price, the SPY EPS, and specifically the Cisco price change. And why is that? Because if we come down here and look, we can see that Cisco started at very high valuations. It started at 38 PE and has collapsed all the way down to a 12.9 PE. So Cisco's EPS has grown phenomenally over this time frame. But since it started overvalued, if you would have bought it back in, in these overvalued periods, you basically would have had, in a sense, dead money. The company's stock price didn't return what the company's earnings did. It didn't grow with the earnings of the company. And we can see that here. We had these overvalued time periods of 38, you know, up even into 40s. And then there was all of this dead period while the earnings of this company were exploding. Then if you were to buy it during this time frame, there's a different story. So if we bought it here at an undervalued rate and we go to the performance chart, we can see that it's now outperformed its own EPS growth. It started from an undervalued to slightly less undervalued, but still a little undervalued. And then the SPY has outperformed it because it started from roughly fairly valued and then has had PE expansion to overvalued territory. So that's how you use these charts. From here, you know, you can add more tickers. You can add up to three here. And then you can also do that from the graph settings in here. So underneath the graph settings, this comparison ticker, you can, you can add these here. And this actually affects one more part of the application. If we go to something like portfolios and take a look at these snapshots, these snapshots will actually have all of the comparison tickers you chose either in the performance chart or in those graph settings for you to use in these snapshots. Those are the two big things with the performance chart that we have changed. The next thing that we've added is the smart metric, which is automatically enabled by default. So you'll have to go in here and disable this if you would like it disabled. And what the smart metric does is it allows the tool to plot the metric that we've defined would be the best metric for that company at this time. And over time, we're going to try and improve the logic of this even better. But as of right now, we've set default metrics for specific companies. So for example, if I'm looking at sales on Cisco, and I've changed this to sales, and I now go to Johnson & Johnson, it will default to the smart metric of adjusted operating earnings because I have that enabled. If I now go to O, which is a REIT, it now is defaulting to adjusted funds from operations. So no matter what you change this to, as long as smart metric is enabled, it will go towards that smart metric and plot that smart metric. Now, for example, if I click this off, and change this to sales, and then now search for Johnson & Johnson, it will now plot sales for Johnson & Johnson, and the smart metric is still turned off. So in order to reset this back to smart metric, just simply turn this back on, and it'll always plot the smart metric when changing stocks. Another change that we've made, which everybody has probably noticed by now, is we have moved the menu bar to a horizontal menu bar right here available um, underneath the company section. All of these are still available in the side nav to the left, but we've just exposed it for easier navigation, you know, to get around the app. But once again, you can click on any of these here and still get to the same spots. And finally, one of the things that we've added is under portfolios, we have added a new ad transactions modal. So from here, under the actions button, you'll be able to click add a transaction. And let's see, we have Apple, Google, Johnson & Johnson, and O in here. So let's say I wanted to add a transaction for a company that's not available in here. Let's say Meta. Let's just put it as today, as a buy, we bought 10 shares today, and Meta is currently trading at roughly $482 per share. So I'm just gonna put 482 in, puts the total, I just tab through, sums it up for me, I add the transaction, and it will automatically add Meta to the portfolio, as well as this transaction in Meta. You can still go into the holdings table and manage your transactions here, or within the company selection. As long as you're in that portfolio, you can manage your transactions here 
as well. But going back to portfolios, so we've added that new add transaction, you know, button ability from right here. And then we've also added some new features and values to the holdings table. So under the holdings table, you can see that we've got prices and percentages. So underneath prices, it just shows the nominal value. Underneath percentages, it will show the percent change for your gain loss, your price change, and your market value change. You can also click this right here that says show open positions only, which will limit this view to showing stocks that have open positions. Anything that doesn't have a transaction or has zero holdings, so like a closed out position, will no longer be shown. So just like Apple, Google, and O don't have that in this portfolio. Those are our big changes for version 4.14. But one thing that I do want to announce is something that we are really working on and trying to bring to our subscribers here very soon. And it is something that we call advanced portfolios. So this make advanced status is not going to be available yet to subscribers. But what it does is it allows us to create a new view for our portfolios and a new tracking system for our portfolios. So when this feature is enabled for our users, what it's going to do is it's going to turn a portfolio that looks like this into something that looks more like this. So we're going to have net investments here, some XIRR numbers, income earned, top gainers, movers, you know, just the movers in general, a growth portfolio growth chart and event feeds as well as some asset allocation and sector diversification so you know i can come here and see what i have in consumer discretionary and then we're including some things like some weighting charts like this so i can see the weightings of all of this whole portfolio graphically and also a uh, chart that we're playing around with here which right now what this is showing is the estimated growth rate of the default metric which is what the smart metric is for these companies as well as the dividend yield so this is showing me the layout of this portfolio and showing me that my average dividend yield of this portfolio is 2.55 percent where the average metric growth rate the estimated growth rate of the earnings or you know, AFFO, whatever the default metric is for those companies is roughly at 19.61%. Now this doesn't take into account valuation or anything like that. That's just, this doesn't say this is your expected return, but the growth of that primary fundamental metric that we're looking at for these companies. So this is just an announcement for this portfolio stuff. We're going to be really pushing to get this out relatively soon. And we're also going to be pushing to get out connecting your brokerage accounts to FastGraphs. So all of your portfolio information will be automatically updated at the end of the day and enable a lot more tracking like these advanced portfolios. There's going to be more detail to come with these advanced portfolios, but as of right now, they're not available to our subscribers and we hope to get it out to you guys soon. So thanks for watching and please reach out to support if you have any questions.